Welcome back to the CSS Podcast. Yes, this season we're doing something a little different and we're answering your most burning CSS questions. We're also recording video, so you get to see us live. <laughs> Hello, I hope yeah. we look like our voice because if we don't, that's really awkward. Yeah, so if you're listening to the podcast, there's really no difference between you know watching us versus listening. We just wanted to give you some options for how you consume this. But uh, yeah, another thing that we're doing different is not talking about you know, specific APIs or specs, we're talking about things that you might get stuck with when you're trying to write CSS, style your websites. Yep, get your favorite cream out to rub all over these burning questions. <laughs> we'll still be talking about those modern CSS features and tried and true CSS tips and tricks with a focus on CSS struggles. Adam, do you think I said CSS enough <laughs> in one sentence? No, three more times. CSS, 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 CSS. Oh I God. have energy. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> so what do you get stuck on? We want you to think of us next time you run into these issues. We're your issues people now. Yes, we, we are. We shall be. And let's start with a little scenario. Uh, let's say you want to put a little banner on a card that says it's featured. That's no problem, right? Just position absolute, add some Z index. But wait a second. It didn't work. The banner floated away to somewhere else on the page. It's not contained in the card and it's awkwardly behind other elements. <laughs> what could right. be happening? Yeah, why isn't that Z index applying that you put on the banner? Well, today's episode is all about the reason that Z index declarations might not be working. Yep, we got your back. Because it's also worth noting that in episode 19 of this podcast, we went over Zindex in depth. But today, we're debugging it. So we've compiled a short list of reasons that Zindex might not be working. So when you run into the issue, you've got tools to try. So first and the most common reason is that you might be missing position relative. That's the pretty much biggest reason that people are like, why isn't my Zindex working? Divs are position static by default, so the stacking context isn't the grouping that you might think it is. If stacking context is a new term for you, check out the link in the show description to an MDM page that goes over it in more detail. But basically, it's the isolated grouping which contains position elements, and you need a position for that or some other properties which trigger the stacking context, like a transform. Yes, the trap for the absolute position, the cage, the container, the bounds, or where left and right and top will reference. It's the window or the whole page, well, or the nearest parent with a position that is not static. In the card example that Adam was talking about in the beginning, where we have that little banner that we want to place on top of the card, this is the card itself. Add position relative to it, and now when the featured banner goes absolute like we want, it'll appear on top of the card. It'll use the balance of the card as its edges. And this will also solve that Z index issue of Z index not working because you've isolated the element for which it's stacking within, where the stacking context is. So if you have a Z index of one on the banner, that should now be plenty to put the featured element in front of everything else. Yes, I find so often that Z index one is all that I need. I mean, how many other things are you really trying to compete with? Um, Anyway, so yeah, it's a good idea to try to use the smallest number of z-index that you can. And uh, you may be tempted after hearing that, you know, you get your card needed position relative, something that if you want to be contained in here, you might be tempted to put position relative on everything. And some people do, because uh, this can help you not forget to add it. But this has a pretty particular side effect. It makes every direct parent a stacking context and traps all of its children to it. So this makes an inescapable stack where no matter where and what your mega Z index value is that you give the child, it won't ever be in front of anything because its parent is behind something else. Each Z index value is contextual to the stacking context it's within. And this is likely why your value of 9999999999999 is actually putting your element in front of something or why it's not putting it in front of something. It's trapped within its parents' context, which is probably zero or one, and it's behind something else. So good tip there is position relative on everything might end up making it hard for you to be within the context and stacking in front of other things that you want. So beware. Yeah, adding more uh, high numbers to your Z index won't actually help which I'm sure you've tried, if that's what you're trying to, to fix. Just add a nine. Add a nine. <laughs> yeah, add <laughs> nine. some zeros, add some nines. 
So another reason that your Z index might not be working is DOM order. And that's the order in which your element appears in the HTML document. So you could have a matching Z index value. So you have Z index one on two elements. Um, and that sibling might appear in the DOM order after the other one. So it piles it on you. And the last element in the DOM tree, which you can think of as the bottom element in the HTML file, is the element that is topmost. So thinking about your DOM order might resolve any matching Z index conflicts. You might need to do a Z plus one in this case, so you might need a Z index of two. Or better yet, use a CSS variable system to organize your Z layers. That'll make your life a lot easier. You won't have to keep adding the nines. <laughs> Open props has those. They're called layers. And so you can just reference like layer one, layer two, layer three, because it's like, how many layers do you need? But it does have layer important, which is the mm -hmm. maximum number. And it's kind of just like a silly joke that it's in there. It's like a nested little Easter egg in Open Props is layer important. And it is the maximum value that it even accepts. And I don't know why you'd use that other than it was important and it felt fun to use. I don't know. Sometimes. I mean, I've also done layers, but it's more been like base, top, top most. I don't know. I don't remember what it was called. But. Yep. In Visbug, there's like five layers and they have names too. There's like, because they're kind of like layers of glass where uh, there's a priority of which things go on top of which things, especially in like a global page context. Anyway, okay, we're getting off track. Another reason that you might not be having a, a Z index successful moment is a typo. You might have you just made a typo somewhere. Maybe you forgot the dash. I don't know. Yep. Uh, or another way is that you have too many Z indexes. Uh, and this can be like a slippery slope. Like I remember doing something like uh, Z index 99. And then the next one I'd be like, Oh, I'll just make that 999. And then like the next one be like, oh, I'll just make it another nine. And then all of a sudden I'm counting nines and I'm like, I should have just used one, two, three, four instead of nine, 99, nine. So anyway, yeah. there's like this dance and a whack-a-mole moment that you might have if you're trying to bump up Z indexes in too much of a value each time. So try to keep those uh, at a nice level of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you're going over 10, you probably are doing something wrong. A really cool feature that was just added to Chrome DevTools are these CSS hints, which actually can help you figure out why Z index isn't working on your page or why any element isn't applying. And it's really handy in this case too. So we're going to put a link in the show notes for a demo that you can play with yourself, explore it in DevTools, where we have a Z index that's not being applied. It's a Z index of negative one. And in DevTools, it's actually just being crossed out. So it looks great and it's crossed out. But now there's a little eye icon next to it. And if if you hover over that, it tells you that it's because the div is in position static. So it's sort of like a little hint to update that to position relative or give it a stacking context that makes more sense for what you're trying to do. So super useful feature. Um, definitely check out CSS hints in Chrome DevTools. Yep, good tip. That'll immediately tell you that no parent has position relative. And so you'd be like, oh, that's why Z index is ineffective. Excellent. All right, well, next is our hot tip section. So we went through a bunch of debugging scenarios, a bunch of errors having to do with Z-Index, and now we've got tools. Uh, so you have like this, these like mentalities and mental models, and now we got tools. What kind of hot tip? Oh, you, you just mentioned a hot tip, but what's this next one you got going yeah, on hot here? Tip. I guess the other one we did talk about a little bit, which is just to use the smallest value possible because it's very rare that you need something you know, over 10, or honestly, even more than one or two. Two Seriously. is usually a max for me on like pretty rare occasions for decorative content when I might be like layering pseudo elements on top of each other. Um, so it's really helpful to use a system of custom properties to manage your Z index things so that things don't get out of hand. You're not adding a bunch of zeros or nines. And when you want to add a new layer, that might be a uh, you know, an indicator that you should add that to your list of custom properties or your design system for your Z indexes. Um, that way you can see everything very clearly organized and you don't have to sort of try to remember and manage all of it yourself. And if you don't want to manage it at all, Adam mentioned earlier that Open Props has a set of preset Z index values that you can use. So you can just use an existing, you know, CSS variable based library and um, use someone else's naming conventions. People hate yeah. naming things. <laughs> naming things stinks. Um, and you know, magic numbers also stink. So like magic number 999, that's a smelly number in your code base. 
Um, yeah. Let's make a plugin for VS Code where it actually finds smelly numbers and there's like little fumes of stink coming off of them in your code. Yeah, there's also CSS stats or even the CSS overview panel and dev tools that'll show you how many different C indexes you have and what all of them are, which uh, was useful when I worked at another company and did like a big design system audit. We found that we had, I think it was like 27 different Z indexes being applied. So it was it was nice to kind of cut those to three. It was like zero, one, Very and two. Cool. <laughs> another hot tip, especially another DevTools one, is there's a 3D visualizer tool that you can use to show the stacking context. It allows you to tilt the page in 3D and see what's in front of other elements. It's really, really cool. Uh, you have to know how to use 3D tools, right? So you got to know like your XYZ gimbal uh, scenario, but it's really neat to tilt it sideways, see the layers of stacking contexts and uh, it can be priceless. So check out that tool if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, good tip. Another, you know, speaking of 3D things, little interesting trick that I do is on my personal site, I use translate Z of negative one pixel instead of Z index negative one to place a background behind one of my images. And that sounds weird, but the reason that I do this is because the image that I'm talking about is actually a background image. So it's like an empty div and I want to put a image border behind that and I make like a it has like a little arch crop that I'm using border radius for. Honestly, now that I'm talking about it, I should probably just make that a foreground image with a clipping mask. But if you're in a pinch and you're trying to layer things behind empty content, you can use this translate Z of negative one pixel trick to do that. Yes, that is a good trick. I've done a trick like that too. It's like adding a ripple to something. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to put it like behind it uh, and allow it to see through. Anyway, there's definitely right. use cases yes. for negative one uh, Z index or yeah. Cool tip. Uh, yeah, you had one on your site. I mean, it's obviously practical. Uh, here's a tip, a Vizbug tip. So there's actually two. Um, I've only mentioned the one here in our notes, but I just remembered another one. So Vizbug, the Chrome extension that's open source that I made, it's built on web components, uh, has a Z index labeling plugin. So the plugins are the little search icon in Vizbug. Uh, and if you launch Vizbug, click on that search icon and type Z index, it will. Um, and you choose the plugin called Z index, it will put a Z index label on everything on the page that has a Z index that's not zero. Hmm. And so you can see them visually stacked up in the context of your page. So no 3D tilting, nothing like that. Um, and it can tell you what their values are and you can debug it that way. There's another one though too. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, uh, who cares? It's it's totally in there. Um, I think it's called uh, whatever. It uses box shadow. So the higher a Z index that you have, you'll see more box shadow. And so there's sort of like a shadow type effect that is trying to help you debug those. Um, and then there's also polypane. So if you have polypane installed or if you haven't heard of it before, it's a really great multi-screen testing tool, among other things. It's got a lot of great features. Um, and it has a few Chrome extensions that offer similar features for Z index labeling. So it can show you and help you debug your Z indexes. Nice. And I guess the last hot tip that I have is if you're futzing around Z-Index for something that's supposed to sort of take over the page experience and like layer on top of the page, you could use dialogue with dialogue.showmodal. So you could use the dialogue element and that is really what it's semantically meant for. And opening it with dialogue.showmodal actually puts it into a separate top layer of your page. So top layer is sort of like this special layer that rests on top of the UI and it doesn't interact with other Z indexes on the page layer below it. So it's kind of like CSS layers and the fact that they don't overlap when you put it in like another whole layer, but this is actually a layer. <laughs> anyway, you get the top layer promotion when you use um, dialog with dialog.showmodal or when you use the popover attribute for popovers. So popover is landing in Chrome 114 and you can use that to also have this sort of like dialog not dialogue, this modal promotion. So you can create dialogues from that, or you can make menus or tool tips or other elements in the UI um, with dialogue. There's like a lot of things you could do there, like little toast pop-ups too. And this way you're not fighting, you know, with stacking context or with layering with the rest of your page if something needs to be on top of the rest of the stuff in it. Uh, so definitely watch out for that. Also popover is in Safari TP. So very excited for that to be landing in browsers. Oh yeah. And that top layer is kind of like DOM order, where it's uh, 
the most recent one to be shown will be on top of any other previous ones that are shown. So yes, so uh, you could layer anyway. on the top layer if you have like a popover on top of a popover, which yeah, dialogues invoking dialogues or popovers invoking popovers is totally uh, plausible. Plausible popovers. Yes. <laughs> Uh, okay, fun fact though, what's the largest Z index value you can specify? Uh, I don't know, what is it? Uh, I want to struggle to, is this 2 billion? <laughs> That's 2 billion, 147 million, 483,647. <laughs> that sounds really specific. Why, uh, why is that the largest Z index? It's the, it's based on the, so like in memory inside of Chromium, the data type that they use to store it, it's the maximum integers value. So it's just the most that that memory and that type of number can hold in it. That's it. Huh. Well, I think that's a the... perfectly little nerdy fact to end this episode on. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. so welcome back to all of our CSS podcast listeners. And thank you for joining us. If you have any CSS questions, we'd love to answer them on the show. Just tweet us with the hashtag CSS podcast. Yeah, we're actually answering those those questions now. So definitely tag us CSS podcast or tweet at me or Adam. I'm Yuna at UNA. And I'm Argyle Inc. A-R-G-Y-L-E-I-N-K. Your question could help a lot of people. And if you like the show, please give us a review on whatever podcast app that you're listening on, or I guess we're on YouTube now. See, our faces are here. So uh, please like the video. Maybe we can get one of those cool like like graphics that points down to the little like button. <laughs> but um, those reviews or those likes, they help other people discover our show and they help us get to tell our boss that people like this stuff and want more of it. So please support with a little heart, heart like whatever it is on on your app. Nice. Thanks, y'all. Looking forward to your thoughts and questions and likes. And we'll see you next time. Bye.